We're going to go over static functions and static classes really, really quickly. Much like in the last video where we talked about return types, this is kind of a addition onto the rest of the series, which is Unity for Beginners. I don't expect this to be a very important video in and of itself, but it's something that I did want to have covered. And it's also something that is in the scope of the little project that we've made here, kind of hard to describe. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the development of my own game that I'm working on at the moment. And I'm going to show you how I implement certain static classes in that. So we're here on my own project and I'm going to open up the combat script, which you've seen before, if you've seen the last video. And that is a public static class. What does that mean? Well, you know how most of the classes that you make, you then put onto an object and you make an instance of that object. That's the heart of an object oriented programming is all about. Static classes don't do that. There's only one of these that exists. And you don't need to instantiate it within your game world. You can at all times reference it. It's kind of like all of your other objects are parts that build a house. Whereas a static class is the foundation. It's always there. You don't see it, but you can always go back to it. You've certainly used static classes before. You haven't made any maybe, but you've used them. Remember when we used a math f to maybe like round a certain number? Well, I'll tell you a little secret. You can see that all of the functions that we see in here are static functions. So that's what that does is even though we don't have a reference to a math f object, matter of fact, you can't even make a reference to a math f object. You can directly use the functionality that is written in that class. So in much the same way, this combat is a static class. So I can type in combat dot and my damage calculation and my knockback calculation methods that I've made are available in any script anywhere, which is very, very useful because the thing here is we've got a damage calculation and a knockback function, and these can be used to damage a player because he got hit by an enemy or damage an enemy because he got hit by a player. The math behind all of that is exactly the same. They both go through this function in this static class. The same with the knockback. The player gets knocked back. Sometimes the enemies get knocked back. With knockback specifically, there's a bit more to it as well, because obviously when the player gets attacked or when an enemy gets attacked, they have knockback. But what if you have, for instance, I don't know, just say something like a water spout on the floor in one of your levels, which also needs to knock back the player when they step on it, right? We've got a lot of different potential situations wherein we need to use this exact same code. So we put it somewhere else in a static class so that a lot of different scripts can easily reference it without having to make a instance of it in every single level that then has to be linked to every object that could potentially want to at any point in time ever use it because it just becomes a massive headache. Now, there's a little nuance here that I want to talk about real quick as well. And that is, this is a static class. So everything in this class, including variables, we can make variables, we can make a static float and just call it number. Everything in this class has to be static because there can only ever exist one of them. If something is not static, it's, it's going to need an instance, which necessarily is not possible because everything in here has to be static because there can only be one of them. But that doesn't necessarily go the other way around. For instance, I have my level manager, which is the game object that manages a lot of different things going on in the level. This could by all accounts be a static class in and of itself, but I've opted to not go that route, at least not at the moment. Uh, and that is because if I make something static, it can't be a mono behavior. And mono behavior also gives a lot of functionality. So sometimes it's a good idea to not make a class static, but you can still make the things inside of this class static, as you can see. So we've got a static game object and a static vector three here. And all these things, even if I had like three objects with a level manager on it, if I change it on one of them, it changes in all of them. Because if something is static, only one of them can exist. So if I've got 10 objects, 
which all share one static variable, in this case, the spawn location for the player. If I change it in instance number 10, it also automatically changes in all the other instances of that object. Unlike a lot of other things in this tutorial series, it's a little hard to show this in a, we'll write a piece of code and you can immediately see the feedback of what it does. I hope that after hearing me ramble for an hour and a half, two hours of tutorial building up to this, you have gotten to the point of abstraction where you can understand this through purely explanation. I'm going to reiterate this once again though, just so that you are entirely sure to understand this. All that something static means is that there can only exist one of them. If that's a class, that means that it's going to be part of the foundational code of your game. If it's a member of a class, that being a variable or a function, that means that every instance of that object shares the same variable. So spawn location, there's only one of them. There might be 10 level managers that all reference a spawn location, but they all reference the same one existing variable. There isn't 10 variables, they all point to the same one variable. So if I write a value to it on object 10, and if I then go to object number six and read that variable, I'm going to see the value that I just wrote to it on object number 10. I hope this has been somewhat clear. Again, this is one of those things that is a little bit less obvious to show off and has a slightly larger layer of abstraction to understanding it but it does make your whole workflow a lot better and a lot easier a lot smoother once you start understanding this and thinking do i need more than one of these in my game if the answer is no you might as well make it static most of the time because it's just going to be easier to reference now that being said you can also shoot yourself in the foot with this because initially i did everything regarding a player uh, also make that static because I'm, I'm only going to have one player and while that works and that is true if i ever decided to like make multiplayer compatibility for whatever reason i would have to rewrite 90 percent of the player related code and that would be a massive pain in the butt so don't go throwing statics around too willy-nilly either and a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below.